What is going on guys? Jason Burke here, Styles Clash for Life, coming at you on YouTube and today I've got some football focus. I am here with you guys bright and early Friday morning, the morning after the opening night of the NFL Draft. Uh, <laughs> I didn't sleep much yesterday, um, had a late party last night, got back in, uh, didn't get a chance to, up, uh, to shoot the video last night, so I'm shooting it bright and early this morning. Hopefully it won't take too long between work to get this video to you guys uh, because the Steelers made some moves and the Steelers are in a pretty good position to go forward for round two. If you're a Steeler fan, I don't know how you couldn't be, at the very least, very happy with the situation we're in, right? So everyone's looking at 32, but I want to first get to pick 14. Yes, I said 14, not 17, because Pittsburgh trades with the Patriots up three spots. And my first initial reaction is, why, why are we trading up three spots? If you're going to make a jump, you want to make a jump of, you know, 10 to 12 picks. People were looking at 9, 11 as spots where Pittsburgh could jump up to grab some guys. And there were some guys left to be grabbed in this first round. There was a lot of surprising draft picks, which left some big names on the table. At that time, going up three spots, I was like, ah, oh, well, I wouldn't want to give anything more than a fourth round pick. Well, that's what happened. Pittsburgh goes up from 17 to 14, trading up for, with the Patriots, three picks for their um, for their 17th pick, for so a swap for the first round picks. Pittsburgh goes up three, and then also trades away their fourth round pick to the Patriots. We'll get to that in a minute. But they go and get offensive tackle from Georgia, Broderick Jones. This guy is, surprisingly was the, uh, I guess, fourth overall tackle taken. Uh, I consider Peter Skaronsky a guard. I've never ranked him as a tackle. I've not thought he was a guard the entire time. So aside from Paris Johnson, I've always looked at Broderick Jones as being the second best tackle in the entire draft. Um, Darnell Wright from Tennessee was taken before him somehow. That was kind of one of those picks that I was like, ah, uh, Wright to me as a late first, early second fringe guy. So Broderick Jones was still sitting there. So was Christian Gonzalez, the number one corner in the draft. And so was JPJ, Joey Porter Jr., the prototype for the perfect Pittsburgh cornerback, the the guy with you know whose dad played here, who's got the arm length, who's got the size. So two Pittsburgh kind of style corners were sitting there, and so was Broderick Jones. And I was wrestling back and forth, going, "Which what would I do here?" You know, like, well, so many good talents are sitting here for us. What do you do? And I wasn't sure which direction to go. But in talking with my buddy at the party about it, you know, it comes down to how many good corners are left over versus good tackles. You know, you can only, but Broderick Jones was the last lead tackle in the entire draft. He was the last first round tackle that you'd want to go after. Corners, there were a bunch of guys left, and there still are most of those guys left. Um, long story short, again, Broderick Jones, 6'4", 3'11", 311 pounds. He is a big mauler. This dude is what I affectionately call a freak. This guy is super aggressive, plays through the echo of the whistle. He finishes plays super strong. He can pull with a tackle and kind of get out rangy in space. He's very quick in space. For a guy that's 6'4", 3'11", this dude is fast. Underratedly fast, obviously powerful. Dare I say the most powerful tackle in the draft. And is just an athletic freak. Uh, this guy gets to the outside well. This guy's an underrated run blocker. This guy's a very good pass blocker. He allowed zero sacks last year. And what was it, like 450 passing snaps? I think he had one penalty and zero sacks. Um, the only knock on him really is, is that he's still a bit raw because he only really started one season at Georgia. He was behind another all-star tackle at Georgia, two all-star tackles at Georgia, because they're always stacked. He only started four games two years ago and then replaced the, the star as the new starter of the past this past season for one full season. But 450 plus snaps, only one sack given up, or no sacks given up, only one penalty. Really, really good stuff. This guy, again, is super quick. He's good with his hands. He's got pretty good feet. If you want to look at any kind of knocks on him, it's that he's so aggressive that his hands get erratic. If you watch him blocking and kind of do the hand extension blocks, his hand placement kind of goes all over the place because he is so aggressive. But again, Mike Tomlin likes athletes and he likes aggressive guys. And he also likes to pull guards and tackles a lot. If you look at our stretch plays, especially now with Jalen Warren being out there, the faster back, you need uh, guards and tackles that can pull and get to the outside and block on the run. And that is where Broderick Jones really, really succeeds. That was uh, two years ago Kendrick Green's best best attribute until he got uh, pulled because he wasn't good at other stuff. But Broderick Jones, he might have some erratic hands. 
He gets super aggressive and excited to be aggressive, which is what you want. Tom Manoli says it's better to be too aggressive than not be aggressive enough and try to pull your level up. So really like seeing that. Uh, I've, I've heard a couple of things about Broderick Jones having a, like slow feet um, in terms of being plodding, kind of being big and thick uh, because his lower half of his body is so thick and powerful. Um, but he has, he has fast moving feet. So he's quick to get off the ball and he's quick to kind of move his feet. But it's, you know, when he gets stationary that his feet are a little plodding. But again, this guy, I, I want to say the word project, but that sounds too demeaning. He's a project in terms of the fact that he's still a newer starter. But again, this guy being so tall, being so strong in his lower half, being so quick and explosive and playing so aggressively, he is what you want. He is a franchise tackle that you're now adding to last year you bring in James Daniels and Mason Cole with guard and center respectively. This year you bring in Sayamalu, you you bring in Herbig as your backup guard. Now you go and draft a franchise tackle in Dewan Jones, who's an absolute combination of speed and power, who's good in space, who's going to add to your pass blocking, but also going to create space for your run blocking. I think he's a better pass blocker than run blocker, but I think he can do both. And I really, really like this pick. And what I like even more about it is Pittsburgh goes and trades up three spots, only gives a fourth rounder up and gets their guy at tackle, the last elite tackle available to where the Jets had to change their strategy and we use their entire clock and switch their pick because they wanted Broderick Jones. So Pittsburgh steals him away. And then now we're sitting at 32. And guess what? Joey Porter Jr., among many other guys, is still sitting there at 32. This is incredible. Pittsburgh now has a chance to get a franchise tackle and still get Joey Porter, a big physical body positioning, you know, guy who, who you know, his father played here. He's been here for many visits. We've talked to him and seen him frequently. We've got a chance to get this guy at 32. More drafts than any other player that I've seen mocked to us throughout the last six months of process has been JPJ. To, to trade up to get a tackle and then come back at 32 and get the guy who was mocked to us at 17, who many said wouldn't even be there at 17, is now there at 32. Pittsburgh can come back down, first pick of this round tonight, and get Joey Porter Jr., which is incredible. Beyond that, there's more options. There's so many. There's Drew Sanders, who's been mocked to us at different times, the best inside linebacker in the draft. There's Trenton Simpson, another freak athlete, a super athletic, fast, physical cover inside linebacker who's sitting there right now. He's sitting there at 32. Darnell Washington, one of the best athletes of the entire draft, the pass-catching physical downfield tight end, another physical monster, is sitting there right now. Brian Brissy, I believe, is still sitting there um, as another uh, line piece who can play D-tackle or D-end. You've got really good players there. What's more than that, beyond those options, is that there are two quarterbacks who are projected as first-round quarterbacks. Will Levis, who some thought might have been a top three or four pick in this draft, and Hendon Hooker, who some thought might be a top 15 pick, are both sitting there at 32, which means teams that want a quarterback who didn't value them in the first round might say, well, they weren't really first-round picks for us. We needed other stuff. But to go get somebody in the second round, wow, what a steal that would be. So now there are teams that might need a quarterback that are looking and going, well, Will Levis could have been a top four pick, and if we can get him in round two, we'll trade with the Steelers and nobody else will get him. So not only is there our corner, one of our our most mocked guys, sitting there at 32, we can steal after trading up to get a tackle, but there's other options for us at other athletic spots like linebacker and tight end, but there are valuable players to other teams, which now serve as great trade bait for Pittsburgh. So now the option is, what do you do tonight? You've got your franchise tackle. You've covered the offensive line. Now you've upgraded in the last two years, center, guard, and tackle. You've got depth now. You've got starters from around the league now. You've got your young draft pick. You've got your line set now. You found your tackle. Now do you do the obvious thing and turn around and get your number 17 corner at 32 and you get your hometown guy and your hometown lineage at 32? That would be a great pick. You can't lose with that. Many people wanted to see Porter picked at 17. You cannot lose with that. Or do you trade down a few spots? You can't go down too far because you still got to get some a few things to fill some holes. Do you do you trade back from 32 to maybe 36, 37, 38? Do you go back four, five, or six spots and get yourself an extra pick or two? You can definitely get your fourth rounder back here at this point. So it's like you drafted Broderick Jones for free. You could you could get a higher fourth round pick than we already had and basically be saying you're bumping up your fourth round pick and still getting Broderick Jones or 
do, do you try to get some some king's ransom? Do you try to get somehow an, an extra second or an extra third? I think if the price is right, if if you're if they're willing to give you an extra second or a, or a high to mid round third, I think you have to take that. If you're looking at fourth or lower, I think you have to look at the options on the table because Joey Porter Jr. is going to be one of the first players taken probably in this second round. I would think so. It's a matter of how high do you prioritize the stuff that you still need? I would love my dream scenario. I don't think it's going to happen. But if you trade back from 32 to like 36 or 37 and they give you an extra second round pick and now you can get Porter at 37 and still grab either a Drew Sanders or a Darnell Washington, now you can add a luxury pick because Washington will be a luxury pick. If you add a freak like that in there and you can still address all your needs because you have another second round pick later, it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be really, really interesting to see what Pittsburgh does here. So what do you think overall? What do you think of Broderick Jones? Was he the guy you wanted? Was he the you know the tackle you wanted? Tell me in the comments below. Also, what do you do tonight? Do you go for the obvious and take JPJ and just call that a steal and call that a win? Or do you trade down a little bit, try and get your fourth rounder or higher back and get an extra player out of this as well? When do you think Porter gets taken? Can we get him if we go five or six spots back? Are we too afraid he's going to be gone? Or are you content with some of the other corners that are still out there? Because, yeah, I keep mentioning Porter being the best available corner, but also there's Keely Ringo, there's Cam Smith, there's Clark Phillips, there's Julius Brents. There's so many other corners who maybe are a step below Porter, but not that much. They're still starting NFL corners that are going to be going way too low. So can, do you feel content trading back and getting an extra pick and getting one of those guys? Could you still get Porter at that spot because teams still need quarterbacks and other first-round talents? It's, it's interesting. Pittsburgh traded up, got their guy, and now has their pick of many other guys they might want on top of the option of trading down. So what would you do? Would you trade down? Would you go for Porter? Would you uh, try to get an extra high round pick for this? What do you think? Tell me in the comments below and please like, share, and subscribe. I do apologize that this video is going out uh, so early the next morning and that I sound like crap and look like crap, but I'm trying. I'm looking to bring you guys uh, rounds two and three at some point between tonight and tomorrow morning as I record this. So be happy with this, guys. I want to hear your thoughts, Steeler fans, and I will see you guys in the next 24 to 35 hours. Take care.